Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are doing well. Today we will talk about chemotherapeutic drugs and introduction to antimicrobial agents. I'm Ikra Ahmed, serving as instructor at Dow College of Biotechnology, Dow University of Health Sciences. So coming towards the introduction of the topic, so what are chemotherapeutic drugs? Basically, the treatment of the disease by any chemical compounds. The term antibiotics refer to the substances that are of biological origin, whereas the term chemotherapeutic agent refers to some synthetic chemicals. The distinction between these terms has been blurred because of uh, many reasons, like uh, most of the antibiotics that are uh, now uh, are actually chemically modified biological products, or even some of them are chemically synthesized biological products. Most of the infectious diseases, once considered incurable, are now cure, curable by the treatment of these agents. By the treatment of these agents, uh, the remarkably powerful and specific activity of antimicrobial drugs is due to their selectivity for the targets that are either unique to prokaryotes and fungal microorganisms. So, what is selective toxicity? Basically, selective toxicity is basically the property of antibiotic. So uh, when antibiotic is used, it should be selectively toxic to its target, not the host. So now we will talk about the antibiotics and their classification. So based on uh, the outcome, the uh, antibiotics are broadly classified into bacteriostatic and bactericidal drugs. The bacteriostatic drugs are those that only inhibit the growth of microorganisms. But uh, on the other hand, uh, the bactericidal antibiotics are those that basically kill the microorganism. In general, the use of bactericidal antibiotics is preferred, but many factors may dictate the use of bactericidal antibiotics. When a bacteriostatic antibiotic is used, the duration of therapy must be sufficient to allow cellular and humoral defense mechanism to eradicate the bacteria. So this is the animated representation uh, that shows uh, bacteriostatic antibiotics uh, are only inhibiting the growth of microorganisms, while the bactericidal antibiotics are uh, causing the killing of microorganisms. So based on the mechanism of action of antibiotics, they are classified into different categories according to their site of action. Some are cell wall synthesis inhibitors, some are those that interfere with the synthesis of DNA and RNA, while some are those that inhibit uh, the protein synthesis. Some uh, are the mycolic acid synthesis inhibitors. Basically, these are those that are uh, used for uh, the infection caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. In today's lecture, we will talk about cell wall synthesis inhibitors. And in cell wall synthesis inhibitor, inhibitors, first we will talk about penicillins. So penicillin is a derivative of 6-amino penicillinic acid. It contains beta-lectum ring, which is essential for its antimicrobial property. Its subclasses have some additional moiety or chemical moiety or some functional group that enhances its antimicrobial trait. So if you can see in this picture, it is uh, the structure of the penicillin G. This is 6-amino penicillinic structure, and it is the side chain of penicillin that enhances its antimicrobial property. So uh, the letter A is written, uh, so uh, where the letter A is written, it is basically the thiazolidine ring. Uh, it is uh, the beta-lectum ring, uh, which is responsible for its antimicrobial trait. This whole is the 6-amino penicillinic acid structure. And if bacteria acquire resistance against penicillin, it act here, where the letter D is written. It act here and it hydrolyze the beta-lectum ring and due to which it loses its property. And furthermore, bacteria also act at, the, at this side and it causes the uh, basically deacylation of the uh, penicillin by producing amidase enzyme. So before proceeding uh, to uh, the mechanism of action of penicillin, first we will talk about the cell wall synthesis mechanism. So basically it is a multi-step procedure. The first step is the synthesis of peptidoglycan subunits. It is the first step in the bacterial cell wall synthesis. 
these subunits basically consist of two sugar derivatives including n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid which are joined together by glycosidic bonds then uh, the next step is basically the formation of the glycan chain when these subunits are formed they are linked together to form long glycan chain which serves as the backbone of the bacterial cell wall now after the formation of these glycan chains they uh, they they have to be cross linked by the peptide bridges which are formed by the action of transpeptidase enzymes this cross linking creates a strong rigid structure that provides support and protection to the bacterial cell now we have the role of penicillin binding proteins these penicillin binding proteins play a critical role in bacterial cell wall synthesis these are the enzymes that catalyze the final step of peptidoglycan synthesis including the cross linking of peptidoglycan strands and the formation of the cell wall the mechanism of action of penicillin binding proteins is to catalyze the formation of the peptide bonds between adjacent residues in the peptidoglycan strands this cross linking basically creates a strong rigid structure that provides support and protection to the bacterial cell So now we will talk about how penicillin was discovered. Basically, it was an accidental discovery by Sir Alexander Fleming in 1928. And uh, what happened? Like uh, uh, he left his Staphylococcus plates, plates on incubation, and then he noticed the growth of the mold that inhibited the growth of bacteria. Like you can see in this picture, this is uh, the growth of the mold, and it is inhibiting uh, the growth of bacteria on on the same plate. So it was thought that uh, they are producing some uh, compounds or uh, some um, and, uh, some biologically active substances that basically inhibiting the growth of uh, uh, bacteria. Now we will talk about the mechanism of action of penicillin. Basically, it is a multi-step process. Uh, it includes uh, three basic steps. Uh, first is the binding of the drug to the special enzymes known as penicillin binding proteins. These enzymes are basically located in the bacterial cytoplasmic membrane. Then proceeding towards the second step. Uh, second step is basically the inhibition of transpeptidation reaction. Uh, that basically the transpeptidation is the cross link between the linear peptidoglycan chain constituents of the cell wall then after that the activation of the autolytic enzymes occur that causes the lesions in the bacterial cell wall and ultimately the death of bacterial cell penicillin and other beta lactam antibiotics work by inhibiting the activity of penicillin binding proteins specifically they bind to the active site of penicillin binding proteins and prevent them from forming peptide bond between adjacent uh, residues as a result the cross linking of the peptidoglycan strands is disrupted and the bacterial cell wall becomes weak and prone to lysis so this is the animated representation of uh, uh, a beta uh, action of the beta lactam antibiotic on the left side you can see the normal cell wall mature cell wall after the introduction of the beta lactam antibiotic it inhibit transpeptidation reaction and block the cross linking of residues and ultimately what happened in the you can see in the right side of the picture the uncross linked uh, chains Uh, have been formed and ultimately it will degrade the cell wall and causes the lysis of the bacterial cell so now we will talk about the resistance mechanism how bacteria acquire resistance against penicillins so uh, uh, there are two mechanisms and one of them is the production of beta lactamases enzyme basically beta lactamases uh, are the enzyme that are produced by the bacteria to acquire resistance against penicillins they causes the hydrolysis of the beta lactam ring and as a result the loss of activity of penicillin occur so to overcome this some uh, inhibitors of these enzymes have been introduced including clavulanic acid sulbectam and tozobectam these enzymes are often used in combination with the penicillin to prevent their inactivation 
some structural changes in the target penicillin binding proteins is another mechanism of the resistance so what happened bacteria acquired resistance by uh, changes uh, the structure of the penicillin binding proteins so uh, the penicillin does not recognize its target and ultimately uh, the uh, the drug does not reach inside the cell and in this way bacteria acquired resistance So now we will talk about how penicillin are used clinically. Uh, so uh, we have different uh, uh, spectrum of uh, and penicillins like uh, uh, narrow spectrum penicillins and divided spectrum penicillin. So what are narrow spectrum and divided spectrum? Narrow spectrum antibiotics or the penicillins are those that are effective against gram positive or gram negatives only while the wider spectrum or the broad spectrum antibiotics or penicillins are those that are effective against gram positive and gram negative both so in case of the narrow spectrum agents we have uh, the example of the penicillin g and it is effective against the streptococci meningococci and enterococcus infection next we have the very narrow spectrum agents including methicillin oxycillin and nafcillin these are effective against some streptococcus infections and uh, uh, now we have a uh, wider spectrum agents uh, including ticarcillin ampicillin and moxicillin these are effective against uh, enterococcus infection pseudomonas infection and also the clapsilla uh, and the infection caused by the clapsilla species uh, these agents basically uh, show synergism against aminoglycoside antibiotics like they uh, they both support uh, each other effects and uh, as a result we have the enhanced effects uh, uh, we observe the enhanced effects and uh, to uh, overcome uh, the uh, problem of the resistance against beta lactamases uh, these antibiotics have been used in combination with, with the beta lactamases inhibitors uh, including clavulanic acid tozobactams so now we will uh, talk about some uh, toxicity related to the penicillins uh, including uh, penicillin basically causes uh, show some allergic reactions including urticaria severe pruritus fever uh, some hemolytic anemia and anaphylaxis and also some gastrointestinal disturbances have also been observed including including nausea diarrhea that may occur uh, by the use of some oral penicillins So the next agent of uh, the cell wall synthesis inhibitors are the cephalosporins. These uh, are basically similar to the penicillins, but they are more stable to many bacterial beta lactamases and have broader spectrum of activity. So, what is the chemistry of cephalosporin? So, cephalosporin is uh, basically uh, it's, it's a structure is basically the seven amino cephalosporinic acid. It is somehow similar to the penicillins. But, uh, but uh, the intrinsic antimicrobial activity of uh, natural cephalosporins is low as compared uh, to some synthetic cephalosporins due to the attachment of uh, various R1 and R2 groups in its uh, structure, like uh, due to the addition of some functional groups, uh, hundreds of potent compounds of low toxicity has been discovered till now. Uh, now, the cephalosporin is basically classified into four major groups or you can say the generations of these cephalosporins that depend mainly on in the spectrum of their antimicrobial. So basically, uh, coming towards the mechanism of action of uh, cephalosporin, it's a mechanism of action. It's uh, uh, somehow similar to the penicillin, but they are more stable to many bacterial beta lactamases. Uh, they also target bacterial cell wall and as we discussed earlier that cell wall is a protective layer that surrounds the bacterial cell and provides them a structural support. Uh, these cephalosporins binds to uh, the uh, penicillin binding proteins that are involved in the synthesis of the bacterial cell wall. This binding leads to the disruption of the cell wall synthesis resulting in the formation of weakened and unstable bacterial cell wall. As a result, the bacterial cell becomes more vulnerable to the osmotic pressure of its environment and causing it to burst and die.
so basically cephalous foreign generations uh, we classified uh, on the basis of their spectrum of activity and resistance to the beta lactamases which can break down and inactivate certain antibiotics the first generation of cephalous foreign are effective against gram positive bacteria while the later generations like second third and fourth generation they have the broader spectrum of activity against gram positive and gram negative bacteria so uh, now we will talk about uh, each generations uh, first uh, we will talk about the first generation of cephalosporin the first generation of cephalosporin uh, include different antibiotics including cefazolin uh, uh, cefalexin uh, these antibiotics are uh, basically used for the treatment of uh, some gram positive cocci including pneumococci streptococci and staphylococci organisms now this second generation of uh, cephalosporin is basically uh, uh, these are the names of uh, these uh, second generation uh, cephalosporins uh, the this the second generation of cephalosporin it is a heterogeneous group like it has marked individual differences in activity in uh, they have differences in their pharmacokinetics and also the toxicity in general they are active against organisms inhibited by the first generation drug but in addition they have extended gram negative coverage now we will talk about the third generation of cephalosporin it has many uh, agents and many antibiotics uh, including ceftriaxone ceftazidim and also other uh, agents the unique feature of the third generation of uh, cephalosporin is that it can cross blood brain barrier like compared with the third second generation of uh, uh, cephalosporin it has expanded gram negative coverage and also they are able to cross blood brain barrier unlike the last two generations like first generation and the second generation that are not able to cross blood brain barrier but the resistance can emerge uh, 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 during the treatment of uh, the citrobacter cerasia marcescens like these uh, agents or these organisms can produce cephalosporinase and acquire resistance against uh, third generation of cephalosporin so now uh, the final and the fourth generation of uh, cephalosporin it has uh, uh, example of uh, uh, cefepim and uh, ceftriaxone uh, cefepim is the example of uh, so called uh, fourth generation cephalosporin and it is more resistant to the hydrolysis by chromosomal beta lactamases uh, ceftriaxone fosamil uh, it is a pro drug of the active metabolites uh, Uh, ceftriaxone and it is the first such drug which is approved for the clinical use and uh, it is used uh, th this uh, generation of the cephalosporin is effective against methicillin resistant s aureus and um, it uh, it shows uh, some bactericidal activity against these strains so uh, now we will uh, talk about some uh, toxicity or some adverse uh, reactions uh, that uh, can occur by the use of the cephalosporin so first is the allergic reactions like the skin rashes to anaphylactic shock but these reactions uh, are uh, appeared less frequently as compared to the penicillins and if we talk about some other adverse effects uh, that include uh, the intramuscular site injections uh, like pain in the intramuscular injection sites uh, like Like if uh, the cephalosporin is given parenterally, so um, uh, or the uh, intramuscular route, the pain uh, at the site of uh, the injection uh, can be observed, and also uh, uh, increased nephrotoxicity may observed. Like so, in case of the renal impairment patients, uh, the dose adjustment may required. So uh, now we are going to summarize this lecture. Uh, basically penicillin are the group of uh, antibiotics uh, that are uh, that derived from the penicillium fungi and it was first discovered by uh, sir alexander fleming in 1928 it was the first antibiotic uh, that was widely used in medicines and uh, it works by inhibiting the formation of uh, bacterial cell wall that prevents the bacteria uh, from reproducing and ultimately kills them 
uh, we, we have also talked about some other agent or cell wall synthesis inhibitor uh, in, uh, called, called uh, cephalosporin. Cephalosporin is uh, basically uh, chemically related to penicillin. It also works by disrupting the formation of a bacterial cell wall that ultimately leads to the death of bacteria. The cephalosporin is effective against a wide range of bacteria including gram-negative and gram-positive organisms. And uh, um, basically, there are four we have talked about the four generations of the cephalosporins uh, that are different uh, with each other and uh, with different levels of activity against different types of bacteria. We have also talked about some resistance mechanisms, so how the resistance develop, like the overuse and the misuse of the antibiotics have led to the development of antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria, then making it necessary to develop new antibiotics. So uh, that's all for today. Thank you.